We're talking to Miss Dennis Davis, who is the uh, CEO, president, and the founder of Entrepreneurial Research and Development Systems, Inc. And of course, uh, all of that is said, uh, Miss Davis, to mm -hmm. indicate, uh, as you have already indicated, that you've got a lot of information dealing with how nonprofit organizations and others can take advantage right. of some of the uh, grants and things that are out there today, but they just don't know, they don't have a trail. And so what we're trying to get from you this morning is a trail as to how they might be able to do that. Right. One of the things I'd like to say is when I was in my training at George Washington, I had an instructor who was head of, national head of the Boy Scouts, and he called us in one day and he said, you are going to be inf the information persons who will be controlling the nonprofit community for the next decade mm -hmm. because you will have the information that nobody will have on how to get the money, how mm -hmm. to set up things and structure them. Mm -hmm. My focus has become over the, the years mm -hmm. to train people, to get them certified. Mm -hmm. The first thing I do when I get a client is I get them incorporated with the state, I mm -hmm. get them registered with the IRS, I get them registered with the state. Mm -hmm. The state of Tennessee is a nonprofit state, which means mm -hmm. that once IRS stamps the document received, mm -hmm. they will give you 27 months to write nonprofit grants within the state of Tennessee, mm -hmm. even before IRS gives you okay. your clearance. Mm -hmm. Then you have the other certifications that you have to have approved by IRS, mm -hmm. and they have a very intricate application form that they require that you complete. Mm -hmm. I have developed a system that is that works and mm -hmm. I have clients who can verify that yeah. you go through that system that once you show them that document they don't doubt that you will be a credible nonprofit that will be mm -hmm. worthy of the government funds you'll be pursuing mm -hmm. with most government organizations mm -hmm. you have to have these kind of certifications to even apply mm -hmm. when they have the congressional budget that's a, that is allocated mm -hmm. on the 1st of October, that's when the money goes out. Mm -hmm. But the new grants are brought in and s the request for proposals are sent out from October until mm -hmm. about January or February. Mm -hmm. It takes eight weeks for them to let you prepare them. You send it in, they review them for eight weeks, mm -hmm. and then they have panels in the summer like May through August mm -hmm. where you review these grants and those were the panels I had the honor of serving on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What they don't tell you is that even if your state is applying for the grant, mm -hmm. you can apply for that same, same grant. grant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they you might be even <laughs> working for your state <laughs> and applying, but you could make that same grant. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, and, and that's a good thing to know because your twist toward delivering those services mm -hmm. might be a little different. Mm -hmm. There was a grant for downsizing 249 or $59 billion. Mm -hmm. But when I called, they sent me to somebody in the state of Tennessee who sent me to a marketing firm mm -hmm. who said I had to pay for a copy of a federal document, mm -hmm. which caused trauma for me, but mm -hmm. I, I got over it. And um, what I wanted to say was that people have, there's enough money to go around. Good. Mm -hmm. When they had the contract on America, they had a $10 billion contract, they still had money left over. Mm -hmm. So it's not a shortage of money, but a shortage of knowing how to get, get the, the money. money. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is when you're working with an expert, listen, follow instructions. Mm -hmm. One letter could kill the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I try to tell, I emphasize that because I know what they, what they look for, what mm -hmm. they listen for. Mm -hmm. You have to listen and follow instructions. Mm -hmm. The thing that they don't know is what instruments are out there. Mm -hmm. They have 8A certifications. When I say 8A certifications mm -hmm. in Nashville, they say, what is that? Mm -hmm. 8A certification means that 22 mm -hmm. to 35 percent of every major contract, grant, whatever that goes out, has had minority participation. Mm -hmm. There are some people in Washington who, who only serve as a minority participant mm -hmm. on some contracts and grants just so they can get the money. Mm -hmm. And that's where the 51, 49 uh, percentile yeah. came when a lot of women came in. Okay. And that's how that e evolved. Mm -hmm. But what it is here, like I just completed the 501c3 for the minority Diversified Contractors Association, mm -hmm. Medica. Mm -hmm. Now they're ready to go. When they get their 8A certification, they will be in position 
to apply for 22 to 35 percent of the the, um, uh, the grants convention that's, that's center, available for the low income. The convention center mm -hmm. and grants that are available. Mm -hmm. And they also have a status where the participants in an association each can get a separate EIN number mm -hmm. if their major organization has a 501c3. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The 501c3 is my my major focus because if you get $250,000 from a bank, mm -hmm. you have to start paying that back before you sell your first product. Okay. With taxes and <laughs> you mm -hmm. know interest and everything. If you get a $250,000 grant, you don't have to pay that back. You have a chance to capitalize, uh -huh. develop your product, develop your your system and deliver your services. In other words, uh, to get a grant is to uh, be able to have access to the same amount of money <coughs> that you think that you can only borrow from a bank. Right. And at the same time, you have to almost pay that money back as soon as you get Walk that Walk out of the door. <laughs> and, but and you're saying that this other money is basically free money. It's uh, not free mm -hmm. because you are obligated to, to, do something. to, uh -huh. to adhere to the rules and regulations, mm -hmm. but at least the stress of having to return, return it, it. Mm -hmm. is not there. Mm -hmm. And that's what you want to do. The, the thing is that, and I also teach people skills. There are people who don't know how to write business plans. There are mm -hmm. people who don't know how to keep books. I make sure that those are incorporated into the systems mm -hmm. I give you mm -hmm. so that you're not irresponsible and just go and spend it and, and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, when I first started as a minority business development student at TSU, mm -hmm. we had at 40th and uh, Clifton Road, it was a store. That was my first project. Mm -hmm. I wrote the plan, got it together, got them set up. First thing they did was they bought a Cadillac and okay. they had two cans of corn on the shelf yeah, and, a, and, and a local a, brand. Yeah, a Cadillac <laughs> in the garage. No, a Cadillac <laughs> at the front door. <laughs> <laughs> so Very good. so we, we want to make sure that mm -hmm. you're responsible. Mm -hmm. And I work with a lot of churches. If a church builds a family, re a family resource center with nonprofit funds under their nonprofit, they can lease that to the church for a dollar. Mm -hmm. If they try to build a church, they're going to have to sell dinners and mm -hmm. call out everybody's grandmother's uh, bequeathed money and everything else. And, and so if we in, in this uh, second segment, we're, we're, we're simply saying that the money is available. There's a lot oh, of yeah. money available and people have to simply go Millions of dollars. Yeah. And of course, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. We're talking to Ms. Jan